so happy to see you today. Oh my goodness. So we are here for our weekly Wednesday webinar, and it is a good one today because today we're going to be talking all about a social media game plan. Do you have one or are you winging it? This is the question. Okay, before we get started, here's a little housekeeping for us. So first of all, as I get going here, it's always good to have our amazing, wonderful, awesome Robin Healy watching the chat, making sure that she steps in. If uh, if we've got a really great question for you guys and, and we've got to have an answer. Hey, uh, Robin, say hi to everybody. Hi, everyone. There she is. <laughs> Thank you so much, Robin. Always love having her um, on the behind the scenes. She's kind of our stage manager in the back side. Um, do me a favor. If you're going to be chatting today, make sure that you, when you're in the chat, you're addressing it to all attendees, not just hosts and panelists. That way, everybody gets to see what you are saying. Also, if you only use a, a nickname or not a name or anything in there, make sure that you put your full name in there because here's what we're going to do. Today is going to be really, really um, content heavy. And so right after this, we're going to send you all the slides for the webinar. We're going to make sure that we can get that to you guys. We can't do that if we don't have your full name. So please make sure that you go ahead and um, put your full name in your um, uh, in the chat if you need to, or you can absolutely put it in um, to your name if you know how to edit your name. That would be fantastic because yeah, we're gonna send these out because you guys are awesome and I'm so glad you are here today. Okay, I do want to go ahead and um, share some really cool stuff happening. First of all, before we do that, some of you guys on here might not know who I am. So let me introduce myself. So my name is Cole Finley, and I am the principal owner and founder of Finley RE Coaching and Consulting, as well as a business performance and transformational coach and trainer. So I've been in real estate since 2009. I've been managing real estate companies since 2012 and coaching agents since 2012. Oh my goodness. I'm an instructional designer with over 25 years of experience as course creator, trainer, and coach. And I'm the chief architect of the 12 Weeks Breakthrough Training and Coaching Program. Speaking of which, so excited to announce Here's Heather Ramos. Heather Ramos, she absolutely just graduated from 12 weeks to breakthrough. We are so excited for her. So congratulations. Yay, Heather. It's so awesome that, that she joined us. She's there showing her little certificate that she received. Very, very cool. And then also want to share with you, these are our four newest participants into the programs. We've got Sonia Wright. She's from Los Lunas, New Mexico. We have Amelia Delgado from Hartley, Texas. Uh, Diana Ambara from Bakersfield, California. And then over on the other side of the country, we have Beverly Getter from Newark, Ohio. Not Newark, New Jersey. Newark, Ohio. Okay, so a little bit more to go. Last week, we had the amazing Jeff Quincy on, and he was really talking about guiding you through the conversation about is it now the right time to buy or is it later? And he gives a really good argument as to why now um, is the good time. Now, what we asked him afterwards, I said, hey, Jeff, can you put together a video that all of our group members can actually share with their buyers uh, um, to help them understand the market? So guess what? Jeff did that for you guys. So here's all you have to do. If you want to scan this QR code, go ahead and scan this QR code. It's going to take you to the link for that amazing video. It's awesome. It's about 15 minutes. So if you want to really share that with any of your buyers, it's a fantastic video. I watched it. Awesome sauce. So go ahead and um, put in um, the chat. If you um, saw the uh, webinar last week, I'd love to know. Did you see it? Was it great fun? He was so, isn't Jeff just like completely amazing? I love it. By the way, Heather, I see your chat there. Um, I'm glad you loved it and you are grateful for, uh, for it and the training. Well, we're grateful for you 
Thank you so much. Oh, and you watched the replay. Great. I'm so glad that you guys are loving it. Hey, we also love it when Jeff is about. So that is fantastic. All right. So here's my question for you guys. So you showed up today for social media game plan. What is one thing? And I'm going to take just a second to ask you this question. What's one thing you want to get out of the webinar today? Go ahead and put it in the chat. What is one thing that you think you'd like to get out of the webinar today? All about the social media game plan. What do you think you are looking for when it comes to this particular webinar? I'd love to hear about it. You know, some of you guys are really, you've been doing social media forever and you're just absolutely phenomenal at it. Some guys, some of you guys are just brand spanking new. You don't really even know where to start. So um, Heather's saying, what content should I post? That's great. I'm trying to say, where do you find your content? That's fantastic. Great one. Absolutely. We can talk about those things. Beverly's saying more engagement. How do I get more engagement? Absolutely. All of these things we are going to talk about in our webinar today. What I'm hoping that we do today, guys, this is not going to be a webinar that's going to teach you absolutely everything and make you the, the utmost person in social media. Here's the thing to understand about social media. It is a beast and a half. So if you want to rule the world in social media, you may want to be hiring some experts. What I'm going to do today is give you a game plan groundwork that you right now can use regardless of whether you are an absolute um, uh, expert or not. Maybe you are new. Maybe you just, you know, you're on Facebook, you're on Instagram, you're on TikTok, and you just have a lot of fun with it. Well, let's see if we can make this one of the pillars in your business. And that's what I'm going to give you today. David's saying, I am a low-tech man in a high-tech world. i got to tell you, David, so many people are just like you. So let's see if we can get you over that just a little bit. Does that sound good, everybody? Awesome. Okay, I tell you what, I'm just going to go ahead and jump in and get started. And let's really talk about the three main benefits of social media marketing. Now, some of these, they're, they're going to make, you know, logical sense to you, really. First one is lead generation and conversion. Of course, we want to generate leads and we want to convert leads. Probably the biggest reason why we want social media. Next thing is going to foster relationships with your clients, with your database, with people who get to start seeing you on your social media. And of course, that means increasing brand awareness. Now, those are three very different things. We have lead generation. So that is actually bringing people and clients to you. That's important. Important Fostering relationships is really about the people you know referring you and creating a deeper relationship with them so you become top of mind. And that really comes into our brand awareness. And you do have a brand. That brand shows up on social media all the time. So here's my question for you. If I were go to go over to your profile on social media, let's say your personal profile, would I see someone who is angry? Would I see someone who is silly? Would I see someone who's inappropriate? Would I see someone that's all business and no fun? All of those things define your brand because when people are looking for you, you better believe they're going to look at your social media. They're going to look at your reviews. They're going to look at all of these things. So social media really means you. You're putting it out there. And even if you have a real estate business, your name is important and that is a brand. So what you post is incredibly important. If you get nothing else out of this today, Understand that when you post, think in terms of a, uh, let, let's say a news agency following you all over the place and broadcasting everything you say out into the world, every opinion, everything you say about other people, every wonderful thing that you say, all the quotes that you post, the really beautiful, fun pictures that you post, all of that is really part of your brand. So let's understand that. All right, let's get into a little bit of the platforms themselves, okay? So I want to introduce them to you. Now, not all of the social media platforms are created equally at all. 
there are major differences with who frequents each app or site, making choosing the ones that are right for your real estate business all the more tricky. It is so important who you choose. So many of us, we, you know, the great majority of us are on Facebook, right? That's who we always see. And we post the same thing to everybody. Using the right platform is really going to be important. And we're going to kind of deep dive into those, but here's some things to keep in mind. Okay. First of all, focus your time and energy on one or two platforms. You don't have to do all six that I'm going to cover with you in just a minute. One or two. Now, if you had a, a marketing agency that you work with and they were taking care of all that, that would be great. But the problem is, is if we want to do all of that, when do you when do you sell real estate? Right. So we need to really focus on one or two of those platforms. The next one, you should choose the platforms based on your local market and target audience. For example, if you primarily work with for some home buyers, go with Instagram because 78% of their audience are people aged 18 to 44. Amazing. And most of them are under the age 35. We're going to look at some statistics in just here a second. Um, the two most popular social media platforms used by real estate agents are Instagram and Facebook. However, there's really great arguments to be made for LinkedIn, great arguments to be made for TikTok, for YouTube, really depends on what you're trying to achieve. And then consider your strengths and passions. Now, some of you guys, maybe you love to write. How awesome is that? Maybe you're great at taking photos. Maybe you love to create videos. I've got a couple of friends who are so amazing on real estate on Instagram and especially on TikTok. It is so fun to watch. Um, social media strategy doesn't have to be all work and no play. As a matter of fact, it actually should be 80-20. And we'll go through that in just a minute. But 80% personal, 20% business. We're talking social media. Okay. So let's take a review for a second of the top six social media platforms. And these are really helping us understand where we're going. Now, of course, the big bad boy of all is always going to be Facebook. Facebook, yes. 2.7 billion users. There's 7 billion people on the planet. That means almost half of the people on the planet are on Facebook. So incredible. I think, think it's amazing. Now, the reason why so many agents are on that, because the ages are 18 to 64. And by the way, does anybody know what the average age of real estate agents in our country is? Tell me if you know what the average age of real estate um, agents is. I'll give you, I'll, I'll give you a, a present if you do that. 46, you're a little low. Catherine, oh, you're so close, Catherine. To four, uh, Kamara, 56, almost, almost one more. Uh, Kamara's the closest. It's actually 57. 57 years old. Now for all you youngins on here, good for you for getting in the business early. Fantastic for those of us who are on the other side of that 57, good for us too. But it's really phenomenal that um, that's why Facebook appeals to so many of us because we're in that age bracket. But if you are um, really catering to a different age bracket, a different demographic, whatever it is, being on the right platform matters. So that's where Facebook does fall into us. That's when most of us are on. That's why you're in our Facebook group because you found us there. Um, then we have Instagram, 1 billion users. Amazing. Ages 18 to 49. It really does not skew higher than that. And again, most of the people who are on it under age 35. Um, by the way, great thing to post on um, Facebook. I'm going to go back there for a second. Of course, ads, videos, market insights, listings, and solds, community-related content, client testimonials. You want to post on Facebook one to two posts per day, if you can, per day. Now, sometimes we think, oh, per week, mm -mm. per day. This is about a game plan. And we're going to put this in a calendar and everything in just a minute, guys. So you're going to see the whole, a uh, big piece of it. Okay. Instagram, here's what we want to do. That's best for personal content, engagement, community related content is really important for people who are on Instagram, listings and souls, client testimonials. Again, great place to have on Instagram, posting frequency, three to five posts per week. 
but stories daily. Stories daily, so important. Basically, story, here's the thing, what a story is. A lot of people think, what's a story? It is once upon a time, there was, it's actually not it. A story is something happened, you tell somebody about it. That's it. Something happened, you tell somebody about it, okay? So here's what we want to make sure of is that if something happened, tell somebody about it. You're in a great neighborhood today, out and about in um, real estate. And wow, you just saw the most beautiful trees changing. That's a story. Oh my gosh, I took my buyers to a house and they absolutely fell in love with the backyard. That's a story, right? There's so many stories that you could just post for a second. It's so, so fun to post. Okay, next one, LinkedIn. This one is a big one and a lot of agents don't understand it. And we're going to get into why this is important in just a minute. But a, a monthly users, 260 million monthly users. Now the ages there skew higher. It's 30 to 64 for LinkedIn people. Now bet it's best for networking, market insights, business related um, posts, blogs, Business people are all over LinkedIn. Also, your luxury clients are going to be on LinkedIn. That's where you're finding them. So you're going to be posting there one to two times per week if that is going to be one of your two platforms to post on. Next one is Twitter. 330 million view, um, 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 users on that one. Audience, 18 to 49. Again, it's, it's like Instagram. It skews younger. That's really about market insights. It's going to be listings, souls. Blogs are really great on LinkedIn. If you are a writer and you love blogs, great thing to put on LinkedIn. And you're going to be posting your three to five posts per week. All right, let's get into the fun one, YouTube, 2 billion viewers. Again, these are in the billions. The audience, everyone, that is everyone is on there. You're going to notice in a little while, in, uh, in a little bit where that skews, but pretty much anybody that's a great audience for. Market updates, com uh, community highlights, buyer and seller tips, listing tours are really important on there. Posting frequency, about one to three posts per month. That would be fantastic on uh, on YouTube. Getting, if, especially if you are really the type of person who loves to uh, be a tutorial type of person, you really like to show people how to do things, right? Uh, maybe you're showing people how do you really want to declutter this closet? How do you really want to paint this room? How do you really want to go about searching for your home? Maybe all of those things. Maybe you have a YouTube channel that is all about teaching people things. Try to keep those videos under um, five minutes if you can. That is your best thing. Um, always for YouTube, unless you're like us where you are using it as a platform for teaching. Okay. Then we go into TikTok. Okay. 100 million users right now and climbing like crazy, really young audience for that one. That's going to be your 18 to 29 year olds. That's best for listing tours, buyer and seller tips, market updates. And you're going to post there about four to eight posts per month. All right, four to pay, um, uh, eight post points. So that, that's really kind of the overview of the platforms themselves. Again, what you want to do is you want to pick your top two. When we're putting together a game plan, go to two. You don't need to go to all of these to um, really hit it right. Just pick your two that you feel the most comfortable with. All right, so step one, let's start talking about your profile. Your profile, that's when people go to any of these social platforms and they look you up. What's your profile? Who are you? So let's talk about some do's and don'ts on your profile. First of all, do use the same profile image for all of your accounts. So if you are on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and LinkedIn, use all of the same images for those accounts. Then we have continuity and consistency for the brand. We really wanna have consistent branding uh, across everything that you're doing. Next thing, don't use a low quality or outdated photo. Your profile image should be equal parts uh, modern, professional and personable. Please don't use a photo that's 10 years old. You look at it, you go, I still look exactly like that. And people are going, who is that? 
we want to tell ourselves that that's us. Get that recent one. Make sure it's high quality. It's not just JPEG. It's a PNG. Um, really, really important that you have high, high quality. And it's just really friendly. It's just really nice. All good stuff. Okay. Here we go. Do open a business account for your Instagram and Facebook. You want an Instagram or, or, or a business account that has also an ad account associated with it because you want to be able to place ads when you get to that point. We're actually not going to talk about ads today. We're really talking about organic growth. Um, ads are paid growth. That's something, by the way, most of you guys got onto our Facebook group because you saw an ad that we placed and you resonated with that. Um, and you may want to do that for your business, but so you, that's why you want to have that business account, um, as well as an ad account for both your Instagram and Facebook. Okay. Don't underestimate your cover image. Make sure you use a clear, non-blurry photo of a home, a local landmark, something that's on brand, something that is looks like it's you and that relates well together. Okay. Next one, do make sure your username includes real estate, realtor, buy, sell, anything else that makes it clear you are an agent. By the way, be very careful in some states, like I could not use the term Cole Finley real estate, because I know in some states I can't use that because that would be indicating a brokerage. So please make sure you go back to your designated broker, your managing broker, your broker, and find out if that's something you can use. All right. It might be buys and sells real estate. That might be a um, part of it. Just make sure it has something like that in your title on that business page. Okay. And then finally, do make a bio that includes your business information, your location, your brokerage name, email address, all the stuff so people know where to find you. Okay. So those are the do's and don'ts uh, of your bios, usernames, and more. So now let's get into step two. And we're going to talk all about your audience. So let's talk about figuring out your target audience. That is key. First thing to understand, what is your market or specialty? When it comes to figuring out your target audience, two big factors come into play. Your local market and the area of real estate you specialize in. For example, let's say you are a luxury agent. You most likely work with a lot of move up buyers or uh, and sellers or business people. Figure out your biggest client base and then focus your time and energy on the platforms um, that those demographics work with and spend the time on those. So let me give you an example of this. So let's, this is fun. Um, again, this will be in your slides and you're, you're going to want to use this particular chart when you're really thinking about who you should going be after, uh, going after and, and what um, is the platform that is perfect for that. Now, we just talked about luxury um, people, luxury buyers. So let's just take a look. I'm going to go through. We're, we've got YouTube. We've got Facebook. We've got Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, TikTok. Okay. Here's an interesting thing. And let's take a look at some of these things. For example, I'm going to look at men and women on Facebook right over here. Look at this. Women, there are 77% women and 61% men. Hello, chicas out there. It is all you. Look how much more. But if you'll look at, at YouTube, it's more men than women. I think that's fascinating, as well as LinkedIn. LinkedIn, where the business people are. But if you look at kind of where the percentages are, um, Kimara, that this was actually gathered from Keeping Current Matters. They went out and they really um, deep dived into all of this stuff. And they found this on the Pew Research Center. That's where they, they got a lot of their data. It's a great question. Thanks for asking that. Okay. I want to go over here to age for a second. Okay. Look at ages 18 to 29. Look at these guys. They are on YouTube like crazy. Okay. 18 to 29, Facebook, Instagram. Okay. LinkedIn, they're not so much there. Okay. Not so much on Twitter, but let's jump up. Let's say that you've got that luxury buyer. Now they're going to be somewhere between that 30 and 64. They're on YouTube a lot, guys. They're going to find you there. They're going to be on Facebook. 
right? They're going to be on um, Instagram. So you can find those people there. 65, look guys, if you've got clients who are 65, you're not going to be over on TikTok a lot. If that's who your audience is, you're not going to be on TikTok. You're really going to be over here on Facebook. You're certainly not going to be on Instagram. Now, we were talking about that luxury buyer. That's probably going to be people who are making 75000 or more uh, uh, per year in income. You better believe it that they're going to be on um, YouTube. They're going to be on Facebook, right? Here's one thing that's interesting, urban, suburban, and rural. So let's say you specialize in horse properties. You're going to notice that the lowest ranking uh, of percentage of users is actually going to be rural versus any of the others on any social media platform. We're really talking urban is the biggest one and then suburban uh, are going to be some of those. So this is a chart that you guys can use and start thinking about who you really want to target. So for example, somebody in the chat, give me a, a demographic or give me a type of client that you really think you would love to target. Somebody give me an idea of that. Or what? who is your specialty? Who do you really like to focus on as far as your clientele? For example, is it first-time homebuyers? Catherine is saying seniors. I love that, Catherine. Who else? Somebody else give me another one. Seniors, absolutely. First-time homebuyers and veterans. That's for Beverly. Okay, so let's take a look at those for a second. Now, if we look at seniors... Okay, so Catherine, when we're looking for you, seniors, right? We can really tell here, we're not going to be on Instagram. And by the way, uh, when you say seniors, 65 plus, I think, right? We're not going to be on Insta. We're not going to be on LinkedIn or Twitter or TikTok. We are really going to be focusing in on YouTube. We're really going to be focusing in on um, Facebook. So, so important. Now, if we've got first-time home buyers. So Beverly, you are looking at first-time homebuyers. So are you, Heather. What's the age range of those first-time homebuyers? Give me an age for both of you guys. What are you looking at? 25 to 35, absolutely. Beverly says the same thing, 25 to 30. So here's where we're at. We're going to be somewhere between um, our top um, um, age of 18 to 29, 30 to 49. You're probably going to be skewing really up here. And look at where we're going. Look at TikTok. Look at Twitter. Okay. Look at Instagram. Instagram is a big bad boy for those first time home buyers. So, this is a great place for you. Here's what I would tell you to do if that's who you specialize in I'd be going to Instagram and I'd be going to TikTok. I think that's a fascinating place to go to. Um, okay, Heather. So, you're targeting your husband's union workers with real estate classes. You better believe it. Instagram, TikTok. Maybe then you drive it over and you have a teaser video on YouTube. That might be a place to go. Um, there's uh, David is saying there's also a large military influence in your area. Absolutely. So where do you think the military folks are online, guys? Everybody t t um, chat with me in here. Where do you think the military folks um, are on their social? And who is the person in the family who's on social if they're in the military? What do you think? Billy says Facebook. Uh-huh. It's Facebook and Insta. And here's the thing. It's usually the spouse, Diane. You nailed it. The person who is in the military is not necessarily always the one that is going to be on social media all the time. It's going to be the spouse. David, it might be the wife or it might be the, the husband. It just depends on, on who is actually in the military group. And absolutely, David, Instagram is going to be a really great place for that, especially if we're talking your average um, a person who's in the military. These are people who are not um, uh, the leadership, really. These are enlisted people. They're in there. You better believe it. They're going to skew younger. So if we think in those terms, we're really talking about Instagram. We're talking about TikTok. Those are great places for people who are in the military. You guys are rocking it right now. So this is how we start looking at who, where do I want to be to find the people that I want to have for clients. All right. So let's move on that again. This is going to be in your guide. So you guys will be able to see all of this. Okay. So now let's talk about what to post. Now there's a lot of content in here. I'm going to go through it fairly quickly, but you're going to go back and you'll be able to read it really carefully to see um, what that's all about. Okay. So what do we post? 
First of all, let's talk about personal posts. Personal posts, this is one of the biggest mistakes agents make on social media is they use it to sell real estate and that's it. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Instead, try the 80-20 rule that I mentioned just a minute ago. 80% personal, 20% everything else. These can be photos of you, your home, your family, friends, vacations. You are a human being. Be one. Be one in a positive light, though. Always be positive. The next is a day in the life. Do that a couple times a week. While your career, st your career statistics may help seal the deal, the initial way to win the hearts of potential clients is by being you. We just said that in the personal side. Stories are a great way to show your followers a behind the scenes look at your life. These can be both personal and professional. So for example, I'll give an example of one. Let's say that you are specialized and you farm in a particular neighborhood. How about a video of you walking your dog around that neighborhood saying this is a great place for dogs? personable because you got your dog there makes it really fun all the dog lovers love it so it's just one of those ways that you can stand out a quotes a lot of you guys are quoters i love that so much a day uh, like just like your day in the life post show potential clients who you are on a personal level quotes give people a glimpse into your personality some people love to do really funny um, quotes. Some people look very serious quotes. Some people like to do inspirational posts, aspirational kind of quotes. All of those things absolutely apply. It really is up to you. And what speaks to you will speak to the people who you really want to have as your clients. Posting positive, uplifting quotes show people your leadership, your caring, your thoughtful, grateful, and inspirational, like I said. All right, market information and insights. This is three times a week you want to be posting these. Whether it's buyer seller tips, the latest housing news, or a quick monthly update, sharing posts with market insights sends all the right messages to your potential clients that you're finding on your social media. That way you build a reputation as a real estate agent who knows what's going on. You do want to show your expertise in what's going on. How about community information? You're going to do that two times a month. Post things like neighborhood community events, city community events, charity drives, new restaurants in town, or anything that would help a potential client learn more about the communities that you serve. You may also want to post spotlights uh, on your preferred vendors in the area. I always think that's a great idea. Or maybe some of your favorite um, um, family-owned businesses in the area. That could also be things that you want to focus on. Next, really big one, client spotlights and testimonials. You want to do this at least twice a month. Nothing says good business like sharing a client appreciation post, a spotlight, or a testimonial. You can make this simple with a quick snapshot of a home you just sold, a pair of keys, or even a good quote. How about this? Have them take a selfie of themselves in front of their new house. Post it, right? Such a great thing. There's so many ways that you can do a testimonial. All right, listings and homes as needed. You're not going to only do this. So many real estate agents, that's all they post. All they post is their flyers on listings, their flyers on just sold. And, and by the way, when I say flyer, it looks like a flyer on that post. And that's not going to be stopping the scroll. When I say stop the scroll, all of you have been on your Facebook, your Instagram, or your TikTok, and you're, you're scrolling through everything, right? What makes you stop? It's usually a visual. It's usually something. So be very, very clear and careful of what's going to make them stop the scroll. So you're a real estate agent. Let people know it. Absolutely important. Whether you are a listing or buying agent, you should use your feed to showcase what you do best. Let the caption do the rest. Pro tip, here's, this is important. And there's a couple of agents I know that do a brilliant job of this, by the way. Um, and is, is Amanda Valine on today? Amanda's so amazing um, at this. If you're if you're on today, say hi, Amanda. She's brilliant at tagging in all of her social media. She does such a great job. Um, and make sure you use local hashtags to get your posts in front of more eyes. For example, Richmond Real Estate or RVA Real Estate, Richmond Realty, anything like that for all your people who are in Richmond on the East Coast. Um, just a shout out to you guys. All right, open houses one time a week or as needed. Again, this is um, uh, open houses are still one of the most popular ways that um, buyers and sellers find their next real estate agent. Do it fun though. 
just don't post, you know, like a, the listing and say, come to me, see my open house, make it interesting. Stop that scroll, make it an event on social media. Okay. Post a pre open house video tour, right? Do a Facebook live stream. And by the way, do a giveaway while you're there. Okay. Why don't you give away a dinner for two at XYZ if someone who just saw you on your live stream came into the open house? Why not? Create a short uh, Instagram reel about all the top features of the home. So that's a real quick one. Love those. Post a video of the features of the community and the neighborhood. All of these are so important. Absolutely. And then let's do lead capture at least once a week. This is one, uh, this one is something very few agents are doing right now, but is one of the best ways to get a return on your investment from Facebook, especially. Lead capture is essentially the idea of offering something free, but of value to your audience in exchange for their contact information, typically an email address or sometimes a phone number. For example, you might offer a free equity evaluation on their home. What's an equity evaluation? Basically, it's a CMA for people who aren't thinking about selling or buying anytime soon. It's the biggest investment that they have in their portfolio. And guess what? You're the only one who can help them understand their earnings on that investment. And that's with an equity evaluation. Great way to start there. All right, here's some additional post types, by the way. Video testimonials. Love the video testimonials. Take a video testimonial of your clients right after closing and post the clips to your page. So important. Um, post questions. Ask your audience questions about their dream home, your area, or home ownership. How about home maintenance tips? Suggest various uh, ways to maintain a home, helping you stay top of mind. Recommended services. Recommend a great loan officer, home inspector, contractor. Ways to improve home value, offer tips and suggestions for improvements that can be made to homes to increase value, and holidays. Uh, celebrate holidays with your audience, big or small, with a festive photo and quick uh, quote. Now, but I want to get into this, and this one is really important. This is called the eight types of effective content. By the way, there's a really great class by Adam Earhart, and he owns the Digital Marketing Academy. I'll have a, a link for him in just a second, and you can check that out. But he has these eight types of content. Um, and when I show you the calendar, I'm actually going to be showing you these eight types of content um, that you can put on a calendar. And I just think it's so clever. So I want to review these with you guys. They're so important. All right, let's start off with core. Core, what do you believe? What are your company values? Why are these important to you? Important, make sure you share values that you also want your ideal customer to have so you can attract more of them. Like attracts like, that's what we're looking at. For example, maybe somewhere in your post, you say we are obsessed with world-class service and communication. Are you obsessed with that? Maybe you are. Maybe it's just like, oh my God, you are, you are a savant when it comes to communication. Sure, put that out there. It's one of your core values. Another one, contrarian. This one is a fine line. So I'm gonna be very careful with this. Let me read what it is. And then let's go ahead and see if we can figure out exactly how you'll use it, okay? What is an industry norm or accepted way of doing things in your industry that you are against or disagree with? Why is their way wrong? And what are the consequences or effects of getting it wrong? So for example, so many agents use the three Ps to listing your home. Anybody know what the three Ps are? You ready? Here it is. You put it on the MLS, you put a sign in the yard and you pray that it sells. <laughs> That's how so many agents go out there. They just do the three Ps, but it's not really about how you list a home. By the way, we do have one of our guides that so many of you guys have requested on our group. And that really is all about um, how do you articulate your value um, either before and all the way after. Um, so if there is, uh, if you want that guide, feel free to, you can just message us back here. You can get on uh, Facebook. You can look for that or you can simply put a post on our Facebook group and saying, hey, where's that guide Cole talked about? And we'll get that figured out for you. Heather, Diane, that is funny, isn't it? The three Ps. 
<laughs> I've always loved that. Okay. So be careful of criticizing someone though on this one when you're contrarian. Try not to point out a particular person, just like I did not um, call out a particular person. But you do want to talk about the things that so many people do, and here's what you do differently. For example, so many of people, when they do an open house, they'll put like two signs out and they'll be sitting on the couch. When people come in, they say, Yeah, go ahead. But maybe you do like this 20 point, absolutely super spectacular open house. And that's what you do. And it makes you different and makes you stand out. That's why it's important. So that'd be contrarian. Okay. Next one is confidential. Um, what is the story behind why your business was started? Share the problem it was there to overcome and share why your business still to, uh, uh, still does today. For example, I got into real estate because I knew I could do better than the agent who sold me my home. By the way, that's one of the reasons I got into real estate. How about you guys? It might be uh, it. Absolutely. There might be all sorts of reasons that you're in the business. Maybe you have always found it your absolute core value to really help people. Um, maybe I, I have one client and this was so incredible for her. She was actually homeless when she was younger. And she became a realtor because she never, ever, ever wanted anyone to experience that. And she wanted to help people start building wealth through homeownership. It's a great story that she really can tell in her business. That is the story behind why, why she's in business. Great story. She's such an, such an inspirational per person. Um, connect. What did you see, hear, learn, or discover in the past few days? Think of any movies or TV shows you watched, conversations you had with friends or books, articles or blog posts that you read. For example, I'm so excited about that new show on HDTV. Oh my gosh, I learned a whole new hack on how to fix my grout in my bathroom. I don't know. Could be anything like that, but it's something that connects. It's, oh my gosh, did you guys see that new, um, uh, that new show, 1883? It is so cool. I am a big fan of, uh, of Faith, Faith Hill and Tim McGraw. I don't know. It could be anything, right? Anything that just makes you connect. All right. Let's go to the last four. This is consult. Share your knowledge you have and show people how to do something or how to get a specific result. For example, market updates, financial advice from your lending partner. All right. How about case studies? Share a customer testimonial or story. Pro tip, get a testimonial from every single client that you have. By the way, you don't have to wait until it closes. How about you do it and you videotape it during the home inspection? That might be a different way to go, right? Why not? Okay, all sorts of ways to do a um, testimonial from every client. Conversation, ask a question, ask advice ask for feedback or do anything else to get the conversation going. For example, what do you think about X? What do you think about this particular um, closet? How should it be decluttered? Do you prefer X or Y? Do you like this kind of style or this kind of style? Do you like this kind of home or this kind of home? Questions, it all works. Conversion, what are a few things you want people to do? Sign up for an email um, list, Book a call, purchase something. Don't be afraid to ask. Just make sure you present it in a way that highlights the benefits the customer is going to receive. It's not about you, 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 you. It's about what they get. It's about them, 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 them. That's all about conversion. And here's what I, oh, I was telling you about. Digital Marketing Academy, they've got a great, really great overview on um, digital and social on there. The class is about, I want to say it's about $350 or some somewhere around there. Um, worth it if you really don't know a lot about social media. This one is really great. Um, so this is just kind of one of those ideas for you. All right. Now, step four, when to post. So let's talk about a process that you can go through for this particular one. First of all, how do you make a social calendar? There's really three steps to that. The first one is make a list. You're going to make a list of what you want to post and the days you want to post them for each platform you use. This can literally be the same outline you use every week. Remember, consistency is key. And I'm going to show you what that's going to look like in just a second. Next, spreadsheet. Consolidate your list in a spreadsheet, breaking it down day, platform, stories, et cetera. You can even pre-create captions, hashtags, et cetera. 
So everything is ready to go. Awesome way to go. And then finally, post and repeat. You now have a social calendar you can use every week. Schedule your posts or post them live according to the schedule you created. So here's some basics to understand. Your posting calendar should be four weeks at a time. And I'm going to show you a four-week calendar in just a second. The order of your post doesn't matter at all. Just make sure that you spread out each type of post to avoid multiple posts of the same type back to back. And your posting calendar should be um, designed with a minimum of one post per day. So let's take a look at an example of a calendar that you guys can use. All right, here's what we go. We have four weeks that we're doing here. You're going to notice week one, we have your story. That's a confidential uh, post. Maybe the next day is going to be your neighborhood market info and consult. That's a consult post. Free buyer and seller guides, consult post. Client testimonials, a case study. Community events, you're connecting. Open house, that's a conversion moment. Personal, that's connect. So you see how we kind of have them spread all out throughout the month. And you'll see the different types of things we just discussed. You guys can take this, rip off and duplicate, R&D it yourself, and then start putting together what you want to post on each of those platforms. Take a break there for just a second. Is this helpful? Are you guys um, getting this? Is this feeling, are you getting some good stuff out of this today? Give me a, give me a thumbs up or give me a yes call. That would be awesome. Great stuff, Beverly. Thank you so much. Yes, excellent. Thank you. Yes, I appreciate you guys so much. Yes, you will be getting all of this again. We're going to send that out to you. If uh, um, Robin, do you have everybody's full name and stuff? So we'll be able to send these out via email to everybody. I'm missing a couple. Okay. Do me a favor. Check your messages inside the chat. You might have some personal ones from Robin. We want to make sure that we get these out to everybody. We don't want to miss anybody. So if we don't have it, check in the chat, see if there's been any messages to you specifically. Okay. So let's talk about planning your calendar then. Okay. First things first. Paul? Well, yes. Before you move on, Karen was asking, should these be posted to just business profile or both on private and business? You know, it's a really, really great, great question. And the answer is both. Okay. You have a personal profile. Now, sometimes people have a very private personal profile. They want to keep it private or they might have a semi-private and then a really, really private. It depends on for you, but you're a human being. So you want to do on both sides. But the one thing you want to do is make sure that you've, you are relatable. If you're only using your business side, then you got to do the 80-20 rule even there. That's important. Now, you can drive almost everything to that business page if you want, but that means we're really driving people there. You're asking a lot of people to become a fan of your page. You Maybe you're posting ads that go to that page. All of that is really important. Um, just find the, the balance that works really great for you. Um, but if you really want to build clientele, you do want to have a business page. Okay. So great question on that. Um, thanks so much, Catherine. Okay. Or, or Karen rather. Thanks so much. Okay. So planning your calendar, plug in any date specific posts you already know about. These are things tied to certain dates, such as open houses, holidays, tentative closings, et cetera. Two, look up community events in your area and plug those in based on their dates. Aim for at least two events or stories per month. Next, research what's happening in the market and plan out your marketing updates, ideally around three per week. Um, try to mix up different types of market information, article links, infographics, uh, basic charts or graphs. All of those things are great to be able to post. You might find them in different areas and then you just do a repost or a share. You can do that. Um, pro tip, so important. Be careful planning market information too far out. As things can change quickly, you guys know in our market right now, things are changing quickly. Make sure anything you schedule in advance will still be relevant when it publishes. All right. Fill in the blanks with your evergreen posts. Evergreens, are th those are things that are good anytime, always. And that can be posted any day. Quotes, lead capture, current listings, all of those can be evergreen. And finally, schedule as many posts as you can using Hootsuite, uh, Hootsuite rather, Facebook scheduler, Buffer. By the way, we do that a lot in our site or Facebook group is we actually schedule out um, a lot of our posts on there. You can absolutely do that inside of Facebook. Um, just be sure to monitor your schedule so you can make changes as needed. 
So important. If you get a new listing or, or listing sells, right? Um, pro tip at the beginning of each week, schedule out uh, a, as many um, posts as you can for that week or beyond. This will be a rolling process. All right. So that was the most there. Before I, I go on, give me give me two or three of your biggest ahas so far today. Tell me what you learned the most. What was your favorite thing today so far? By the way, I just love it when you guys are engaged and you're you're talking with us. So, so good. Love, love, love it. Important. What do you think you're getting the most out of today? Do you know what most people say when, when we go through this? Um, oh, I love this, Heather. Um, reminder to make a calendar and the ages of users on the platform. You better believe where the people are. Yeah, absolutely, Kamara. I love your name, by the way. I just love that. Beverly, um, posting a lot more than I thought and focusing on um, what targeting my audience. You got it. Diane, how many people are watching each platform? I know. Content idea, Dawn. Oh, absolutely. Right. There's a lot of good stuff, and I want to make sure that you guys are understanding it. This is not going to be a one and done video. Here's what I'm going to really strongly suggest you do is, and we will, by the way, email you the link to the video as well. So you're going to get the YouTube link. You're going to get the, the guide we're going to send because you were here today. We love you guys. We're going to get all of that to you. Love it. Um, thank you, Karen. I love that so much. She says we're so inspirational. I love that. Adela says calendar schedule demographics for each social media. Fantastic. Felicia, helping me with what to put up. Absolutely. And Adrian, love the content schedule. Helps me focus on what's necessary. Age group on each platform. I see, David, there you go. I love this. You're not so low tech after all. That's awesome, David. I'm so glad you said that. Heather said also open house posts. I need to get better posting content videos etc. By the way, Heather, in your market, I don't know if you um, uh, know Jennifer Thompson. She is an absolute open house guru. She started with me. I love her so much. So check her out, man. She does the greatest posts on, on, on social like crazy. Um, that's just go set up a coffee meeting with her, Heather. That'll be great for you. All right, guys. So I want to move into something else then, if I can, for just a moment. I did ask this question last week. I'm going to ask it again. So if you know the answer, don't, don't shout it out. But here's the thing. What is today's date? Put it in the chat. What is today's date? Who can tell me that? Today's date. Hmm, I wonder what you think it is. David says January 25th, 2023. No, David. It's not. Oh my gosh, it's not. Because here's the thing, in real estate, it is actually three months from now. Here's why. At the point where someone comes into your world in real estate, in real estate, it takes seven to 12 weeks for whatever they're doing to make a decision to buy or sell to close that house. So anything I do today is going to show up in 12 weeks. All right, that's three months from now. So it's not January 25th, it's January, March, April. Um, wait, January, February, March, April. It's April 25th right now. Ah. So are you on track for your goals or do you need to rethink them? Oh, congratulations, David. While watching this, I sold a property. You rock star. That's awesome. I love that. I love that. Here's the thing, guys. We have to understand that we're always in events. That's why we do business planning in October. Because when you set your business plan up in October, then you start it in January. You're always three months. So if you have goals of closing 25 transactions, I'm making math easy, 24 transactions this year, and you haven't closed any yet this month, guess what? You're behind. Okay, so we have to make it up somehow. Because if you don't have anybody in your pipeline right now, right now, then you're way behind, right? Because if you need to close two a month, you're going to be six behind at that point in time. Something to think about. So I always want to ask you guys, who is supporting you in achieving your goals? 
So, so important. Here's the thing. Your 2023 Q2 has already begun. What's your plan? Well, one thing we always love to talk to you about, guys, is 12 Weeks to Breakthrough. It is our preeminent program that we have in uh, in our Breakthrough RE platform. Um, really, really, really has been very, very helpful. We have quite a few people on today that are part of that program or graduated from our, that program. Love having you guys on here. Um, I want to share with you very quickly a little bit about the program. First of all, it is 12 weeks. It's modular. What does that mean? That every week is one module. And inside of each module, there is a video lesson. So you do, or, or several video lessons, you do the video lessons. And then every week you meet with a coach who helps you ingrain that, instill those things into your particular business. So the first week is all about orientation. How do you really set yourself up for this particular program? Next one is mindset. You know, all of us need that idea on mindset. Third one is knowing your numbers. Do you know the numbers that you your business must produce in order to live the life that you want to live? We take you all the way through that, including the numbers you need in your database to hit your goals. Next one is all about client acquisition. You're going to notice I do not call this um, lead generation. I call it client acquisition. Lead generation is a fairly old school terminology. There's a lot of different ways to uh, to acquire clients uh, than just the very traditional ways of doing real estate. Next is the client experience. Are you creating such an experience that people cannot help but absolutely refer you in the future? Next, articulating your value. Can you articulate your value such an extent that you can compete against anybody, any big dog in your market and win that listing or that buyer? Next one is all about time, taking control of your time, maximizing your time, having a strategy. We just talked strategy right now, having that strategy, having an action plan. Um, uh, always so important in your real estate business. Next is operations. What are you doing as far as operations? What's your PL look like? What do your checklists look like? Are you trying to build a team? What would that look like? What are your standard operating procedures? All of these things are in your operations um, uh, module. Next, the gaps. Okay, you've learned things about knowing your numbers and client acquisition and the client experience and value and time and operations. Now, where are the gaps? Where do we need to go back, shore it up? Make sure that we have got all the gaps filled so you really are um, running the program the best way possible. After that comes your growth plan. Okay, how do we move you forward? Who do you need to know? What books do you need to read? What classes do you need to take uh, in the future to keep your business and your momentum going? Next one, this is a big one for so many people, the path of money. Is your money making money? Are you now an investor? Is an investor in real estate? Are you a hard money lender? Are you are, are you investing in the absolute traditional things, stocks, bonds, all those kind of things? You bet, Heather. Thank you so much. Finally, it's going to be next steps. What are the next steps to go in your business to keep it moving forward over the next 12 weeks? So if you want to learn more about the program, we absolutely invite you to go to program-overview.breakthroughre.net. Look at all the details. We've got them all there. And if you want to schedule something with me, there's a button in there. Just click it and you and I can sit down and talk. We'd love to do that. By the way, coming up next month. Oh, so excited. We have our brand new program. It's called Jumpstart. It is for new agents. This is all about training and coaching for brand new agents. It is very similar to Breakthrough, but it's designed specifically for all you newbies who um, don't um, have all of the things going on. So just a second ago, I said, schedule some time with me. You know what? I do it every single day. I meet with people just like you. We do a strategy session. We talk th about things like your social media. We talk about things like what are the pillars of your business? Where do you really need to show up help? Who do you, who do you need to support you? All of those things I'd love to chat with you about. So you can do this QR code, check, click on that, and then you can absolutely set some time up with me. Love to sit down and chat with you all about your business. And finally, if there are some of you guys on today who are not part of our Facebook group, gosh, we'd love to have you join us. Real simple, go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash breakthrough RE and join the group. 
Guys, thank you so much for joining me today. I love, 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 love talking about social media. So I'm so glad you joined us. Hopefully you got a ton out of it. And as always, for the people who joined us, absolutely, you get the first um, shot at the um, replay video, as well as any of the slides that we do. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You guys have a fantastic rest of your week. See you next week. We have a really great one for you. I'm, I'm not even going to tease it. Wait till you see you next week. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.